The Albuquerque police have taken part in 37 shootings, 23 of them deadly. There is a bounty system in place in this police department. Can you tell us more about how that works? Well, a couple of years ago, uh, a number of media outlets reported that uh, the union was given payments to certain officers who were involved in some shootings. What this, what the union had argued is that these payments were uh, allowing the officers to either get away uh, while they were on uh, administrative leave. After that story broke, uh, the uh, a lot of number of union officials uh, left the uh, police union here in Albuquerque. Protests against police brutality in Albuquerque, New Mexico turned violent last night after officers in riot gear clashed with hundreds of protesters. According to the Albuquerque Journal, police threw more than two dozen canisters of tear gas and arrested at least six protesters. The city's police department website was also breached on Sunday, days after a YouTube video featuring the logo of hacking group Anonymous warned of a cyber attack. The protests were prompted by the deadly police shooting of a mentally ill homeless man earlier this month. On March 16th, six police officers in the foothills outside of Albuquerque fired beanbags, stun guns, and six live rounds of ammunition, killing 38-year-old James Boyd. The shooting followed a three-hour standoff during which Boyd threatened the officers with a knife. But the video of the encounter showed Boyd gathering his things and agreeing to descend to meet officers right before the officers fired on him. It was not an isolated event. Since 2010, Albuquerque police have taken part in 37 shootings, 23 of them deadly. According to a New York Times report from 2012, the city's police officers receive payments of up to $1,000 each per shooting as part of an officially sanctioned bounty system. Since 2012, the Department of Justice has been investigating the police department over complaints of civil rights violations and allegations of excessive use of force. On Friday, the FBI opened its own investigation into this month's fatal shooting. Joining me now is reporter for the Associated Press, Russell Contreras. Russell, you were at this protest. Can you tell us how it started out peacefully and escalated into violence? Well, the protest started uh, pretty peacefully. It uh, started around downtown Albuquerque and then moved towards the University of New Mexico. It kept going back and forth, and it's about a two-mile uh, march. While the protesters and demonstrators were heading towards either location, they would uh, snarl traffic, uh, create backups with motorists, and overall was peaceful. Toward the end of the uh, evening, uh, protesters started climbing uh, poles and tried to take down signs, and then it escalated toward the end at the University of New Mexico with canisters of tear gas being blasted and then again later downtown right in front of the Albuquerque police headquarters. Is it, uh, do you remember the thing that set that off the you know the firing of the tear gas canisters I believe you tweeted at 3 19 a.m. that day uh, that evening my eyes are still burning from the tear gas do you remember what set that off? Yeah, I mean, what happened was the protesters were right at the footsteps of the Albuquerque headquarters. After uh, police in riot gear surrounded them, gave them a number of warnings, okay, it's, this is an unlawful assembly, we need to disband, uh, they gave a, a, a final warning. At that time, uh, people with, uh, officers with Bernalillo County sheriffs and the Albuquerque police fired the canisters. One canister... Uh, it went past the police toward where some of us reporters were hanging out and then it, it dispersed. So a number of us took off running and then at that time the demonstration was broken up. This was after around 10.30 our time here in Albuquerque, at which time there was maybe about three dozen more protesters still in the area and then they vowed to continue the protest either today or tomorrow. Russell, I think it's shocking to a lot of us that in the last three years and change, the Albuquerque police have taken part in 37 shootings, 23 of them deadly. There is a bounty system in place in this police department. Can you tell us more about how that works? Well, a couple of years ago, uh, a number of media outlets reported that uh, the union was given payments to certain officers who were involved in some shootings. What this, what the union had argued is that these payments were uh, allowing the officers to either get away uh, while they were on uh, administrative leave. After that story broke, uh, the, uh, a lot of number of union officials uh, left the uh, police union here in Albuquerque, and a number of, uh, of reforms have been instituted. Among them is the police department is requiring more college credit for 
incoming cadets and officers to uh, be required to wear lapel cameras. This is what we saw with the shoot, the re our most recent shooting in the foothills, is that uh, it was caught on a helmet camera. We didn't have that in the beginning when um, these shootings started in 2010, but now we do. And I think that is what's driving some of the anger and some of the criticism toward the, the police department. And really quick, Russell, the gun death rate in New, Me New Mexico is 40 percent higher than the national average. The crime rate is 53 percent higher than the national average. What is that all about? Really quick. Well, we're one of the more poorest states in the country. We're dealing with uh, a number of issues here. Our economy has been struggling since the recession. And so it's, it's the totality of all this that is catching up to us as uh, we struggle with crime and also the, the fact that uh, we are. It is a disturbing, a disturbing series of events over the weekend, Russell. Um, thanks for the reporting. Stay safe. Russell Contreras from the Associated Press, Thank thanks for your time. That is all for now. We will be, I will, we will be back here tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, and you can watch me when I fill in for Chris Hayes and do my best on All In tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. The Ed Show is coming up next.